The views and opinions expressed on this program are not necessarily those of this station, JVC Broadcasting Management, or its sponsors. Good morning. This is Mitch Goldberg. You're listening to Money in the Morning with Mitch Goldberg. Futures are up 45 points in the Dow. We begin the day today with mildly up numbers green on the screen. S&P futures up about 7 points. NASDAQ futures up about 10 points. Oil coming in after a big rise last week, off a little yesterday, coming down today. A dollar nineteen. Even the ten year treasury, which now has a yield still slightly over three point seven percent, is yield is down one whole basis point, but at least it's not up. And we talk about that because inflation figures came out today. We spoke about that yesterday, and what we left off yesterday was when we speak again tomorrow, which is now, the um CPI, consumer price index, the main inflation gauge, will be out. Uh, came out 6.4%, expectation was 62 uh, up four-tenths of a percent month over month, slightly, slightly higher than expected. But I think people, I think investors were starting to expect a low rate, and then the last 24 hours, investors started to whip themselves up into a frenzy that said, you know what, we're worried about inflation coming in too hot. Because if inflation comes in really hot, the Fed has a lot more work to do, slow down the economy, raise rates a lot more rapidly, et cetera. If inflation comes in mild, lower than expected, that would be a good number, which I think today is considered a, a decent number. Uh, what happens, the Fed still stays tight. You know, it still has two more, at least we expect two more rate hikes in the tank, each a quarter point to get to a terminal rate of about five to five and a quarter percent range for the Fed funds rate. And the Fed wants to leave it there if inflation could continue to moderate. There's so many ifs in this that it's almost impossible to really make a a short term prediction. And I actually want to get people away from making short term predictions. So we focus on this sort of news because it's important, but you know, then we get past it and then we decide what do we have to do as people saving for retirement, not wanting to lose a whole heck of a lot of money in the market while we're trying to make a whole heck of a lot of money in the market. And, you know, do you consider losing money in the market a loss or do you consider it a temporary setback? Uh, hmm. One of the things that that I talk to people about, and I want to pull my real world experiences into the radio show is, you know, what, what, you know, what are people asking me? What do they talk about? And they say, Oh, well, I'm worried about rates or I'm worried about my account. I'm worried about my portfolio because I'm worried about my retirement. So these are the kinds of things we get into. So we're going to talk about that a lot more in this show today, but let's take a look at a couple of other things. Uh, Bank of America says NVIDIA, the chip manufacturer, can lead the artificial intelligence arms race. Now, I talk about NVIDIA a lot as a key player in artificial intelligence. It is a leading player. They've got what I think are the best chips for that. That's just not my conclusion. That's after numerous and voluminous things I've read about it. And so the artificial intelligence uh Stock picking continues, and I just want to warn everyone that you're going to see a lot of, you know, uh, obscure stock recommendations that you've never heard of that are just like each one of them has, you know, the, the, the golden the golden hammer that's going to make everything great that you have to own. And. I, I like to say be weary of that, and just because somebody puts it in a product, a unit investment trust, or an exchange-traded fund where they package a bunch of AI stocks, artificial intelligence stocks, into a package, it still doesn't mean you're getting a quality package. 
And some of them might have like, well, the key players are NVIDIA, Microsoft, Alphabet, which is Google, Facebook, now called Meta, um, Netflix even. And that's okay. Then they'll put in a whole bunch of obscure little names to make it like, well, you're getting the big ones too. I, I, I've i seen these things before from internet stocks to pot stocks, uh, crypto-related stocks. There's there's always a hot sector. I remember 3D printing stocks. <clears throat> so, you know, buyer beware. It's nice to get those pops and valuations early on. And a lot of these stocks have already taken off so much already. I, I wonder, like, how late in the game you are. Because what happens is with, with a new hot sector, they get hot for a little while. By the time products come out for retail investors, which is basically everyone listening to this radio show. And by the time you get into them, they're already hot. Then the sector has its, you know, its cooling off period. And then the real ones continue to take the ball and run. And I find that the real ones are the bigger names, the companies who have the actual money to invest in artificial intelligence. Now, just so you know, artificial intelligence is not just limited to tech stocks. Every company that you see that's publicly traded on the stock market, just like every company today is an internet company, they all use the internet, they're all going to be using artificial intelligence. You look at an auto manufacturer, you look at a food company, they're all basically, they've all basically become internet companies in, in a way that happen to sell whatever product they, or service they sell. So artificial intelligence really is just going to make corporate America and globally, corp, the global corporate world, uh, a more efficient, streamlined place. All right. So just, we're kind of meandering a little bit here. And, uh, as my friend Dave says, who is at the radio station says, stick to your script, bitch. We are so far off script today, but you know, that's part of the, uh, spontaneity thing here. That's, that's what makes this a conversation, not a, uh, just, just a broadcast show, right? And I want to talk to you. I, I, I want to speak with you. I don't want to just sit here and lecture you on what this stock is doing, what that stock is doing and what the futures are doing because you could get that anywhere, really. I, I want you to get perspective and education. But since we are at it, the futures just turned negative, not severely. Dow futures is up 10 before. Now it's off 8, for example. Th this is nothing major. And I think uh, the street, Wall Street investors, they're just trying to decide what to do with the market. They're trying to pick a direction and invest in it. I I'm, I'm going to tell you what direction I picked. I'm investing in my retirement plans, my own brokerage accounts. And I'm thinking long term. I'm not thinking the end of 2023 because I'm 55 years old and I've got a long way to go. I'm thinking 2033, 2043. I'm thinking long term. And all this noise of the ups and downs of the market, it's, it's just noise. Go, go, go about your business. But it is interesting. It is fascinating to see the interplay of the economy of politics. Probably Nikki Haley, if you haven't heard, threw her hat in the ring, the second uh, person to uh, announce her candidacy for the Republican nomination, Trump being the first. So it's starting to get interesting there. And we're going to start seeing, you know, uh, economic proposals take shape. And I think that that's really the part that I find fascinating. So we'll, we'll get into that. Um, yesterday there were a couple of big calls. Disney, uh, I think it was, uh, Morgan Stanley Bank of America said 20% upside. Uh, Zillow, uh, Evercore ISI gave it a buy rating with 40% upside. You know, I was thinking, you know, it's just about the beginning of the home selling season. So, you know, may, Maybe there's some seasonality to a stock like Zillow, you know, buy just before the season, you know, February, and then get out of it toward the end of the season, toward like July or August. Um, I'm not saying that houses don't sell off season, but that seems to be the, you know, 
the big the big season. KeyBank reiterates Apple as overweight. Uh, a couple of other big ones: Evercore, Evercore downgrades for Solar. Goldman Sachs initiates Palo Alto Networks as a buy. Bunch of stuff going on. Okay. So what we're going to talk about next is Roth IRAs, more specifically Roth 401ks versus traditional 401ks. And we're going to talk about the difference between estate planning and a will. They are different. And beneficiary designations because it's one of the things I see when people come in here is their beneficiary designation on a 401k plan is still uh, their ex-wife or something, and you've got or their ex-husband. You've got to change that. You have to update the stuff. Okay. So you're listening to Money in the Morning with Mitch Goldberg, 103.9 FM, LI News Radio. We'll be right back after these brief messages. Stick around. We love having you here. I know I kind of jump right into the music, but I really want to get every minute with you that I can. The time goes by so fast. So what I was talking about before is I take a real world stuff, the kind of questions that real world investors ask me and the kind of things that people are uh, want to know and the challenges that real world people face. And I bring them to you in the show and I think that imparts a little bit of uh, experience, knowledge, wisdom, and that's what the show's about, okay? If you want to learn uh, more about me and you want to take the conversation further in a one-on-one, uh, I have a new website just uh, for the show, a splash page. It's moneyinthemorning.info. I couldn't go with the .com because somebody owns that URL, and uh, I reached out to them, but I haven't heard back. So I just went with Money in the Morning. Dot info. Please check it out. And my name is Mitch Goldberg. So give uh, a call, an email, snail mail, whatever it is, reach out. Okay. Some of the stocks that I'm watching this morning are Boeing off 66 cents pre market, uh, Eaton Corp up $3.41 up. That's up $3.41 pre market. Granger, you know, the company that gets things done. It helps you get things done up at twelve bucks at sixty six hundred and sixty eight dollars. A couple of other uh, movers that I'm seeing: Procter and Gamble up ninety three cents. Uh, energy stocks look to be off on the open. Uh, Chevron down a dollar. Exxon Mobil down ninety five cents. Well, I've got you. Futures are now a little bit more into negative territory. So let's talk about a couple quick things. What's the difference between a will and an estate plan? All right. Uh, a will hap- will is important after someone dies. And I hate to be gloomy on a nice uh, morning, but, you know, it's important. About, this stuff's important. You know, I find a lot of things that people don't want to do, like pay attention to their beneficiary designations and updating their estate plan and will and all that. You, you actually feel better about your outlook when you do these things because it's how you take control. Having an updated will and estate plan is like the ultimate form of taking control. And when I explain it like that to people, they're much less resistant. Now, I'm not an attorney. I don't give legal advice. You should consult with a true blue attorney that specializes in this topic but it is an important financial topic and it comes up all the time and one of the first things i ask people uh who are you know in a new client advisor interview is how do you have an updated will and people say oh yeah i, I have one it's i did it like uh, eight nine years ago i think usually when people say a certain amount of years that they did something you know i did it five years ago or whatever Usually you could double it, and that that's a much more accurate picture. People's memories fade. Oh, yeah, I did like three years ago. Bet you it was six years ago or more. That's just the, w- the way it works, okay? So a will happens after you die. You, this person gets this. This person gets that. You know, th- that's what a will does. And people think, oh, I have an updated will. 
An estate plan is a little different. An estate plan, actually, it's very different. An estate plan happens when you're still alive. It moves your money while you're alive maybe into a trust account. Maybe it moves the maybe it moves the ownership of your house into a trust account. And there's all there's all kinds of trust accounts. Maybe you have to have a, a special needs trust. If you're like me and you have a special needs child and you have life insurance, you might have that beneficiary of your life insurance or part of your life insurance goes to a special needs trust. This is what an estate plan does. You set things up now. You you don't wait till you die for the insurance, the life insurance to pay into the special needs trust. You actually have to buy the life insurance while you're alive and healthy enough to get life insurance. An estate plan could also <clears throat> direct who your your directives, the pull the plug directives, uh, <laughs> who has who has guardianship over your children. I find that the guardianship aspect is where a lot of people stop planning their estate plan, where they just stop because you know husband and wife can't agree. Um, very often, the wife has a sister that becomes the guardian, where you pick close friends, but you have to do it. Uh, you don't want to leave it to chance. Uh, I remember uh, I picked my mother to be my guardian, but my mother is uh, up there in years, and I had to you know pick someone else. So these are the things that you you need to do. Um, lo lots of things you could do in an estate plan to make sure you live the way you want, and also to give you the opportunity to die. Uh, in a way that is acceptable to you should you become incapacitated. So there's a, there, there is a big difference between an estate plan and a will. I hate to be so gloomy, but this is like a really important part of finance, and you are not being financially responsible if you don't have this. The other thing is uh, I want to talk about beneficiaries. Beneficiary designations on your retirement plans and life insurance policies – do you know your beneficiary designation on your IRA and your 401k are final? So if somebody has a 401k and they have a spouse as their beneficiary, which is, of course, common, and you have to put your spouse as your beneficiary designation unless they sign a special form that has to be notarized. But if you get divorced and remarried to somebody else and you pass away, if your ex-spouse is still the beneficiary, they're getting the money because the beneficiary designations on an IRA and a retirement plan and insurance, that supersedes the, uh, the estate plan and will. So it's incumbent upon you to change. I meet with a lot of young couples, newlyweds, and, you know, most of the, pretty much every time their beneficiary designation is their parents and they, they didn't even think of changing their their beneficiary beneficiary designation to their new fiance or, or new spouse, and so these have to be changed too. And th these are all of the things that are part of like have like a financial order of events that we go through these checklists to make sure all of these things are are updated. And I th I think most financial advisors will, will do this will help you along this process, but there's a lot more to it than just the, uh, you know, investment advice. I like to talk about stocks and all that, but this stuff is important. Okay. Um, and then last thing I want to get into is you, a lot of you right now have the opportunity to pick a Roth IRA or a, um, a, I'm sorry, a, a new 401k plan, a Roth 401k or a traditional 401k. If you are in a super high tax bracket, you're making just tons of money. You're in one of the top two or three highest tax brackets. A tax bracket's a little bit lower now because of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act that will sunset back to pre-2016 tax rates in 2026. Probably the traditional IRA is probably your best bet. I have to, can't say this is specific individual advice for you because I don't know your situation, but probably is your best bet. But for almost everybody else, a Roth 401k is probably the better option. 
because if you're going to be if you have a suit if you're in a high tax bracket there's a good chance your tax bracket will be lower when you retire so you you, you do that arbitrage you pay the taxes you get the, you get a bigger tax deduction now and you pay the taxes down the road but for most of us other people right you go with the Roth so you don't get a tax deduction on the money you put into the Roth 401k. The tax deduction might not be worth as much money to today, but it could be worth a lot more to down the road, especially when paying taxes impact on your retirement plan distributions impacts how much you have to pay toward your um, Medicare, which is a really, really big deal. So these are the kinds of things that you should know about. To take this conversation further, check me out. Moneyinthemorning.info. Check it out. My contact information is there, and you can reach me through my website, clientfirststrategy.com. You're listening to 103.9 FM LI News Radio, and if you haven't done so, check out the LI News Radio app on iPhone, Droids. It is a great app, works very well, and you can take us on the road wherever you go. Thank you so much for joining to, joining me today. Greatly appreciate your time, and I look forward to speaking with you tomorrow. Securities and investment advisory services are offered through Next Financial Group Incorporated, member of FINRA SIPC. Client for Strategy is not an affiliate of Next Financial Group Incorporated. All the views expressed are those of Mitchell Goldberg and Client for Strategy and not those of Next Financial Group Incorporated. Views are general in nature and not intended to be investment advice. Any discussion of individual security should not be construed as a recommendation or solicitation by our presenters. Next Financial Group Incorporated does not provide tax advice.